Today I have three decor ideas from trash. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Today I'm participating in Trash for Cash by David Owens Creates. Be sure to check out the playlist below. The first project is a tablet box makeover. Beginning of summer, we got some tablets for my kids and I decided the sturdy boxes were gonna work. Here they are. I've got some of those metal signs from Dollar Tree in a three pack, some Elmer school glue, and then some 12 by 12 crafting paper. Choose whatever print you like. I love these. I'm going to use my little heat gun here to take my stickers off the box and they peel off so nicely. Everything is nice and smooth. This box is actually sturdy enough that I can make two signs out of it, but I'm just gonna make one box sign. So you can tape your edges down if you would like, or you can use a little hot glue to glue it together. This is a print that I've chosen, but the one under it's gorgeous as well. All right, so I am going to flip this over on my cutting mat. I'm gonna make sure that I have it even underneath. My corners are all even. And then I'm going to use my little crafting knife here and just cut a nice smooth line. And then I have the perfect fit for the top. I'm gonna to take this purple glue, no worries. It does turn clear whenever it is dry. This is a really good choice. I like to use this purple glue because you can see exactly where you put it and you'll know if you miss any spots. Plus, you don't get all the bubbles when you use the glue stick. Win-win. Okay, gonna go all the way to the edges as well. And then I'm gonna take that paper, flip it back over there, and just make sure it's lined up and press it down. Here's a tiny bit of space on either side, but I'm not worried about that. It matches with the background of the paper. So you can use a ruler or any type of a tool to press that down and make sure it's nice and smooth. You can paint or decorate the edges of your box if you want to. You could use ribbon to trim it out, whatever you like. I'm gonna leave mine plain. And then here are some beautiful deco art paints. They are all metallic. There's a espresso, a rose gold. There is a gold, beautiful, glorious gold. And then the worn penny, which is my very favorite. I'm gonna take Mod Podge and a little sponge brush and just put some Mod Podge on here first. This is going to make our paint stick better. And this is just something I like to do when I'm painting on metal sometimes. You can skip it if you don't have any, or you can use school glue if you'd like. Be sure that it is dry. I'm just gonna dry mine in a hurry here. And then when it's dry, you can take another sponge brush and just start dabbing on, or just kind of uh, pouncing up and down with your sponge brush, and just go all over up and down until you get the coverage that you like. I'm not looking for a solid, opaque finish. I like to be able to see a little bit of that galvanized metal underneath. Simple, simple. If you don't have these words, you could also use your Cricut to make some words, or you know, you could, if you can freehand it, you could do that too. Dry on that paint, and once it's dry, we're gonna use some of these little, um, these little sticky tabs, and I'm gonna cut them in half. And then that way they will fit on the back and give us a little dimension for our project. So you're gonna pull the paper off of each side. This exact brand, I'm not sure where it came from because it was thrifted, but you can get something similar to this at Dollar Tree and they'll work just fine. I use those too. So when you cut those down like that, you can put it on the thicker, longer pieces, just like you see me doing here. And then you can turn it over and lay it on your project. You can, again, eyeball this if you want to, or you can use a ruler and kind of go at each end and from side to side to make sure that it is straight if you would like. Then you can gently, gently press it down. And then I'm just taking a ruler to press it down evenly because the um, it won't bend any of the metal. And I think that looks really nice. You could use white or navy blue, something that really stands out if you want, because this just doesn't stand out a whole lot, but I like it. I'm gonna use this wall, this uh, walnut furniture repair marker, and I'm gonna go over the edges of this beautiful metal word. 
This is just so that I can see it a little bit better and it stands out a little bit better. And I'm just kind of going on, almost like when you are doing your own hand lettering and you kind of on the downward stroke, you may get a little bit thicker or darker. That's kind of what I was going for here. Hand lettering is not something that I do, so <laughs> probably not doing this correctly, but um, it's gonna give me the desired look, I think. It's enough for me to, to know. And hey, we, you know, we gotta try new things and we don't always do everything right either. I mean, you know, it's okay. It is okay. We love ourselves, we get creative, we embrace that part of us and we're not perfect, so it's okay. It's just crafting, right? And there is no wrong in crafting. So just cover this as much as you would like. You could also use black around the edges if you wanted to, like a black Sharpie and that would really make it pop. So now I like that much better. Who would have thought an iPod box? So if you want to do a little something extra, you can take any type of a wooden embellishment or a sticker and add to the bottoms, or you could add it to the top, you could add one, you could layer them on. Those are wooden stickers that you see on the bottom. And then that one actually, I pulled off of something from a fall piece from Dollar Tree years ago and I just hung on to it. You could do them right next to it if you wanted to also. But I like it just like this and you see it stands quite nicely on its own. Doesn't need a stand or anything. The next one is a scrap lumber makeover. This piece of wood was destined for the garbage pile. It was actually next to the burn pile and I pulled it away from the tree so I could bring it in and use it and apparently not my table over in the process. So this is what it looks like. It's kind of dirty, scuffed up. I went ahead and wrote down 57 inches so you'll know how long this is. I didn't trim it down. It's exactly as it is when I pulled it. I'm going to use some walnut wood tint. This does not have any smell at all. It doesn't stink. It doesn't stain. It's great. Well, it stains your wood projects, but you know. So I took it outside and used my sander on it, my electric sander, and then brought it back in, wiped it off, get all the little dust off. And then now I'm just taking an old terry cloth rag here. You know, you can keep your old towels and just tear them into shreds and they're really good for staining and cleaning your craft projects. You save a little money that way. So you can just go ahead and put as much as you need, as much as you like for whatever coverage that you desire. You might could use antiquing wax, but I'm not entirely sure because things don't like to stick to it very well. So I've gone over to my Cricut and I'm cutting out the letters for the word harvest. I've already measured everything. This is not like a Cricut tutorial video, just letting you know. I'm not a pro, so I'm not gonna give you a step-by-step -step on a Cricut, but there are plenty of crafters who know exactly what they're doing. You probably wanna go to them for those tutorials. Moving along, I am going to remove or weed all of the extras off. And you see the little pick in my hand that actually comes from Dollar Tree and I really like it. So I am going to, now that it's all weeded, I'm going to take a piece of contact paper that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna lay this on top and I am gonna use this to lift my letter off without tearing my letters. So I am transferring it. This is like a transfer tape, if you will. I'm gonna place it down here on the wood and I'm not gonna press it all the way down yet. I'm gonna measure and see how far down it is, if it's where I like it. And that's what you see me doing here. And then I'm gonna move it down just a little cause I need a little space on the top for extra embellishing. And I'm just measuring here on the sides as well so that it is centered. And then once it is, I can press it down with my hands and then get some type of a tool and or a squeegee and then go ahead and press this down into place. This vinyl that I'm using, I thrifted it. It is awful. It is awful for vinyl projects, but it is great for stenciling because it peels up very easily. Ta-da! my first one. Okay, so now here it is with all of the letters in place. I've used about 
there's like an inch of space in between each letter there. So I have a nice gap. Then I'm going to take some of my plaster chalk paint and go over the top. I'm lightly going over the letters so that I don't go under because I didn't seal. And then I'm going to go heavier over after that. Then you can just peel off. You can see how that was tearing. And then this is what it looks like and I love it. Love it. Love that dark wood showing underneath. Okay. So you can get these packs of little wooden cutouts from Dollar Tree, um, Harvest DIY Words. Very good value because there's six in there. And you can use these to embellish your projects. I'm gonna use this on the top of my sign. And I'm just going to stain it with the same stain. Like the, oh, look what I did. Oh, it's so frustrating. They are so fragile, y'all. But look, I'm just gonna keep going. I'm rolling with it. Just keep on going because we can fix it. We can fix it. Oh! Okay, so I'm going to use a little bit of my wood glue here. And I'm going to be gluing this down. I've already glued down the two Fs. And I'm going to glue down the rest of the word right next to it so that it is exactly where I want it to be. Wiping off my extra wood glue. I'm just going to stick it back together. See, no need to throw it away. We can still fix it. The next project is a sauce jar makeover. So simple. A lot of steps, but easy. So this is a spaghetti sauce jar. It has been put through the dishwasher and all the sticky has come off. And I have some candle tops. I have some berry garland. I also have some moss, some foam, etc., etc. I'm going to start by trimming off a little bit of foam to fit in the lid. Be sure that you put it right in the center so that you do not, it doesn't get in the way when you put the jar back down because we will be putting the jar back down. You're going to glue some moss on here. You can use reindeer moss if that's something that you prefer. And we're going to take that berry garland and turn it into a little tree. Yeah, a little fall tree. So to, mo to make that stem a little bit sturdier we're going to fold it up on itself twist it and then just kind of pinch it together so it's skinny then you're going to cut off different lengths of that same berry vine and then start twisting them together at different heights on that what we're going to call our trunk the longest branch we're going to call that our trunk you're going to start adding on in the shape of a tree this is going to kind of symbolize a fall tree so if you didn't look at those as berries you could imagine that those might be fall leaves right because they're a dark red and an orange so you can cut them at different places i like to cut right above where the little berries come out because then you don't have a stick poking out on the top what is actually the tip of it will be where the leaves would be if those berries were leaves so i'm going to wrap around here and just pinch it together with the little pliers whenever I need to to keep it in place. Our tree will not be flat. It's going to kind of look that way for a minute. But then once we get it all um, as thick as we want it, as many branches as we want it, we will pull it out a little bit and twist the little branches in the ways that we like them. And then it will be ready to go into our jar. So now I can take that sturdy branch that we made and press it down into that foam underneath. And this is our little tree. It is not too wide and it will easily fit up into our jar because we checked it, we know it's the right height. So I'm gonna press down, tighten it up, and just trim off the little pieces that are on the outside. This is the easiest way I've found to do it. And now we're going to embellish the bottom so that it doesn't look like a jar sitting on a piece of wood. So we're gonna take some jute we're going to tie it, or you can start it off by just gluing it down, but I just tied it this time for whatever reason. And then you can just start twisting and gluing because there is a Prego label, Prego, Prego, whatever you want to call it, spaghetti sauce label, cut into the glass or raised up off the glass, and we want to cover that up. So you can twist going upward and just add dots of glue where you need it. And this is going to cover up that piece. If you're here from any of the other crafters channels and you are new to my channel, welcome here. I am so happy that you came by. I hope that you check out the playlist below 
to see everybody else's projects. I would love it if you would subscribe and become part of the family here. We have a good time. We're very social in the comments and very supportive. All right, so you see how it looks. I've shown you here how it looks when you go all the way down to the jar. Now to put the top and bottom on the jar, we're gonna use some whatever type of glue you like. I've got some um, super glue gel stuff that comes from Dollar Tree. Fix All, I think is what it's called. And then some hot glue, and we're gonna center it over that lid on the bottom. So that's gonna be our base. And then the smaller lid, we're gonna use the same glue process as before. And we're gonna put it on the raised areas now because the bottom, some of them have like a, a little indention. You're gonna put the top on. And then you can use like a bead or a knob or a little pine cone or some type of embellishment on the top. I just have a piece of a chest set that I got from the thrift store. Just use some hot glue and put that one down. We're not gonna be lifting it by that little piece, so no worries about that. I'm gonna wrap a little bit around this lip just because I think it looks better. Uh, you know, with the bottom, it looks more finished, I think. I'm gonna trim that off. And then I've got some bows that were destined for the garbage can that came off of other projects. Saved them. And I'm gonna recycle them and reuse them on the base of this cute little piece. Isn't that sweet? That's cute, y'all. And now you can just dovetail your ends or cut them at a slant or whatever you wanna do there. You could also just make a jute bow or you can make a bigger bow to go on there or you could put your bow on the top. But here's our little tree in a jar. Isn't it cute? Almost like a little fall terrarium. Love it. Okay, y'all. After making the DIYs, we're supposed to try to sell something that we make. I'm so glad you could come by today. I have something wonderful I want to tell you about. I think you might like it for fall. Really? What is it? It's a porch leaner. I don't have a porch. Well, you can use it inside too, not just outside. That actually sounds great. Here it is, and I made it with my own two little hands. Well, what do you think? Wow, that I'll take it. Okay, y'all, just being silly there. Gotta have fun, right? Gotta find joy and laugh. All right, so here's our harvest sign that we made from the box. Would have been recycled. Very simple, free, cost me nothing. Cost me nothing to make this as well. All of these things I already had at home. I love this. You could also put some lights in there if you wanted to. That would be cute, little twinkle lights, little fairy lights. I like the way this looks. Very rustic. And here is our leaner that we sold for $20. Okay, so it says harvest, very simple. The bottom is open and that is intentional because I wanna have that down there where it will still be seen. You can see the word above the pumpkins that I will be stacking around it. Thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed to my channel. You mean the world to me and welcome again to all of the people who are new here. Be sure you check out the links to the description box below so you can see the rest of the creator's creations. See you again soon.